A needle is inserted into a joint for two main indications, aspiration of fluid, also known as atherocentesis, or injection of medications. This topic will review the basic technique of inserting a needle into a joint for both diagnostic and therapeutic reasons. It includes indications and contraindications, as well as a technical demonstration of an intraarticular injection. Finally, we will be discussing the nuances of joint aspiration in contrast to intraarticular injections. There are a number of indications, both diagnostic and therapeutic, for joint aspiration or injection. The two most important indications for diagnosis are evaluation of sepsis in a single inflamed joint and initial confirmation of gouty arthritis by polarized light. The main therapeutic indications for injections are injection of joints with inflammatory arthritis including rheumatoid arthritis and spondyloarthropathies and injection of soft tissue structures including various bursae and tendon sheaths. Important contraindications to consider include bacteremia, inaccessible joints, joint prosthesis, overlying infection in the soft tissue, and uncontrolled bleeding disorders or coagulopathies. Be sure to exclude these before beginning the procedure. In this technical demonstration, we will be using the knee as an example. It must be stressed that the principles of intraarticular injections remain the same regardless of the joint, namely, palpate to find easy access to the joint capsule with the least obstruction by bone, and importantly, avoid any neurovascular bundles. It is important to note that this requires a basic knowledge of the anatomy of each region. We will be covering the necessary landmarks for the knee, but other regions will not be covered in this video. The necessary landmarks of the knee joint include the quadriceps tendon, the patella, specifically its superior aspect, and inferior aspect, the patella tendon which attaches to the tibial tuberosity, and the lateral collateral ligament which attaches to the fibula head. In the demonstration, an inferior lateral patella technique will be utilized, where the injection site is located approximately one centimeter inferiorly from the inferior aspect of the patella and one centimeter laterally to this point. Good preparation goes a long way. First of all, consenting the patient. Patient education prior to joint injection or atherocentesis should include a discussion of potential complications, including mainly infection and post-injection flare. A septic joint must be distinguished from the more common post-injection flare. Infection should be suspected if the flare lasts longer or begins later than 48 hours after injection. There is the presence of a crescendo pattern of pain redness or drainage around the injection site, and fever or malaise. The usual post-injection flare lasts only a few hours rather than days. Patients should be advised to return should they experience any symptoms suggestive of septic arthritis. The patient should also be advised to refrain from any strenuous activity. The equipment required includes one syringe, two needles, one for drawing up and the second for injection, a larger bore needle is used for drawing up of medication. The injection needle size depends on the clinical context, where typically larger joints require larger bore needles. The medications, which in practical terms will consist of mainly a glucocorticoid, a local anesthetic, or a combination of the two, one set of clean, non-sterile gloves, three alcohol swabs, and finally tape and cotton wool. Prepare the equipment by drawing up your medications using the first needle and then replace it with the sterile injection needle. Finally, fashion a small plaster out of tape and cotton wool. Now you're ready to begin. When positioning the patient, it is important to choose a position that is suitable for both you and the patient. The knee may be placed in either the extended or flex position, depending on the clinical context. For the purposes of this demonstration, the knee has been placed in the flex position. Finally, make sure that your equipment is ready and easily accessible. Start by locating the injection site. Palpate the patella for its inferior aspect. From this point, move approximately one centimeter inferiorly along the patella tendon, and then one centimeter laterally from this point where you will feel a soft spot. Use the blunt end of the needle cap to mark the skin where your injection site is located. 
The clinician should be gloved and comply with an aseptic technique. Once gloved, begin by cleaning the socks. This is done by a three swab technique, which entails starting at the center of your injection site and spiraling outwards. This is to be performed three times. Once the area is dry, take the syringe with your medications and insert it perpendicular to the skin at the injection site. Once in the joint space, aspirate to confirm the position and inject your medications. Once you have injected your medications, withdraw your needle and apply compression with a cotton wool secured using the tape. Remember to dispose of your sharps appropriately and thank your patient. The principles of inserting a needle into a joint are the same for both the aspiration and injection. An important difference is the method of sterilizing the skin. With arthrocentesis, the best method to sterilize the skin is similar to that of the preparation for blood culture. Three separate concentric outward spirals with an iodine disinfectant or a scrub with chlorhexidine. In summary, we have covered the principles of inserting a needle into a joint, which can be for either diagnostic or therapeutic reasons. Importantly, one must always exclude possible contraindications, know your landmarks, educate your patient, and prepare appropriately. We hope you have gained something from this video. If you did, please like the video and subscribe.